He had Cove, is that right? Did you score an own goal? No, that is right, the only goal, <laughs> only own goal I scored in my career. Honestly? Yeah, was only own goal. Brilliant, brilliant. Uh, but, but I won my 12 cases of lager. Because <laughs> I won, I, I pipped uh, Billy Gordon to the Highland League. Uh, player of the year? No, not player of the year. The Prison Journal uh, select team. Okay, and you won 12 cases of lager? 12 cases of lager. You didn't drink, James. No. <laughs> I'll tell you what, the kickoff's held up till 3.15. What, um, what an atmosphere inside Bellsley this afternoon. Oh, it's fantastic. It's great to see the crowd come out. Uh, town's fairly gotten behind the crowd, uh, behind the team today, so just frustrated for the players. Though. They'll want to get going and get, get, get the kickoff and yeah. get the game started. So, uh, yeah, the sooner the better for the boys. How big a part were Nerves play this afternoon, James? You've played in the biggest of games for Fraserburgh. It'll play a wee part, but once once the whistle's blown, the, the guys will get their heads down, they get on with the game, they won't be thinking too much about mm-hmm. about nothing other than getting a win. I'm looking at the team lines, what an amazingly strong bench Fraser I've got. If things aren't going right, they've got guys they can bring on like, like Butcher, Duncan, Wally West, Gary Harris, they've got a strong, strong bench this afternoon, haven't they? No, absolutely. It's pretty clear that uh, March went with an experienced starting eleven. But he's got he's got 17, 18 guys in this squad that can all play. So he's he's got plenty of options this afternoon if things aren't going his way. Yeah. Looking back to Wednesday night, you know, it was 93 minutes gone and it looked at the league was the Brox. And then Bucky scored in the 94th minute and sets up today. So I'm pretty glad they did actually and sets up beautifully for today. Um, in one way, yes, I agree. But on the other hand, it'd be nice to get the league in the bag and today it'd have been more of a party. But... Uh, yeah, they've a lot to do today, but I'm sure the broke will get after it and they'll get, they'll get going quite quickly. Of course, there's two sides here today that are very, very big, strong, physical side for us. They always have been. No, they are, and uh, they're sitting mid-table. They've a few good wins this season as well, so there won't be any, a walkover this afternoon. The broke will have to play well. One thing I think could be very interesting, big centre-half Graham Fraser is out today. Now, his twin brother Lee is there. Will he play up front as he usually does, or might he slot into centre half? I'm not quite sure to be fair, but I think you probably will likely play up front, but we'll wait and see. There's a Brock coming out. Well, wonderful, wonderful. Welcome to Fraserburgh. That's fantastic, fantastic. I said there's got to be 15, 1600 people here at the Junior. Oh, anyway, anyway. At least. Yeah. And was it busy in hospitality where you were? Yeah, it's, it's, it's full, and uh, yeah. The drinks were flowing, so yeah, another 15 minutes was great. You didn't drink, mind? No. <laughs> and I spoke to your dad down there. Lovely to see your dad. I met him just underneath there. He's looking well. Uh, uh, that's good. Uh, so Mikey Stevens uh, plugged in. He's... Uh, is Mikey here, yeah. is he? No, he's not here. He's in Australia. Michael he's, Stevens. He's watching him and his son, Liam. Well, so, Mikey, uh, it's uh, lovely to talk to you online, Mikey. If you're logged in in Australia, I hope you're enjoying a few tinnies and uh, maybe a few after the game as well. Nice to talk to you, Michael. Do you remember the day there was a golf outing with a Brock at uh, beside Strathleen? Strathleen. And Michael's younger brother, Andrew, Andrew. was not playing golf. And Andrew had the beer with him that day. And he was standing on the edge of a bunker with a great big hold on his back. And all of a sudden, <laughs> he fell back into the bunker and smashed half the cans. It was a, it was a monumental art. There was spray of beer everywhere. Michael, do you remember that? I do. Uh, there's been a few, a few good golf outings at the Brock. You remember these more than the matches something? I know, I know. Well, all we need now is the referee. He's no slept in. I did see him earlier on. I wonder what colour the referee's going to be in. I would imagine maybe blue. Green or blue? Oh, he's in blue. Uh, big Stuart Knight's in green. Oh, Stuart Knight, the forest keeper, is their captain. Also, of course, long-serving keeper, Stuart Knight. Big laddie, but what a goalkeeper. Tremendous goalkeeper. He was, he was in my team of the year a couple of times over the years. Big Stuart Knight. <coughs> so, we all know what way the Brock will kick if they win the toss. Only one way. Brock will win the toss. They'll kick up the hill in the first half and towards the town in the second half, their favourite end. Everyone who plays the rest of the coach have a great day.
Gamblers are straight across the other side, that punk metal thing, a punk metal, you see it? Oh, our camera's here. This is our camera here. That's the press and general camera on the far side. Our one is here. There we go. The forest about to kick off. Uh, there's, a wee the excitement, James, uh, there's a wee breeze of wind kicking down the towards the garage end as well. That is. Suit, suit the brock in the second half. It's changed. It was going down that way earlier on. It's changed now. The wind is going down towards the town now. It has changed in the last half hour. So Seven's a danger man for Forrest, Paul Brindle. He's, he is a danger man. Man with a strange hairstyle. He's always had strange hairstyles, isn't he? Whatever club he's been at, be it Brora or Clark or Forrest is now, he's always had strange hairstyles, Mr. Brindle. He kicks off. The game's underway. Kieran Simpson will let that one go out for a throw in. First few minutes will be pretty tense, James. Yeah, I'm sure it will. Be, uh, if the Brocken just get the ball down, Paul Young in midfield and Jamie Beagle start to get the get the team going, I think. Yeah. Yep. Well cleared by young Kieran Simpson. Picked out by Paul Campbell. Uh, Bigri didn't find him unfortunately that time although he, although he works offshore it's good good to have Bigri back in the side isn't it ah, his physical presence is important to the Brock man. he doesn't lose much in the air yep. but he can also play football yep he can play anywhere he can play uh, up top he can play at the back as well can't he no absolutely I think Willie West has played in every position bar goal uh, and uh, <laughs> he's not in a bad game in any of them <laughs> Well, Big Lee Fraser, we thought would maybe play up front or at the back, and he's actually settled in in his twin brother's position at centre back. So that's a miss for Fraser for Forrest. They, they miss his power up front. Ah, he's a physical guy. Yep. You can see that. Strange how the number nine playing playing at the last man of defence. That's right. <laughs> that's true. That's true. Yeah, the Brock are against the breeze. Forrest yeah, have got the breeze, breeze in this well. first half. Up as well. It did hold up there. Half an hour ago, the breeze was going the other way. You say Mark has mixed it up this afternoon, gone with experience, hasn't he? Ah, he certainly has. He's, he's, he, to be fair to Mark, he's used his squad pretty well during the whole season. He has. He he's has. Uh, rotated quite a number of players, and as you say, he's got. We've got a lot of experience on the belt on the bench, so if uh, things aren't going his way, he can certainly yeah. change it up. Grant Campbell's been a standout this season for me. I think he's a, such a powerhouse in the middle of the park, isn't he? Uh, he's the most influential player I think they've got this season. Uh -huh. yeah. uh, scored an ex excellent goal against Devon Vale a few weeks back as well. Yep. That's some haircut, Mr. Brindle. It's like a scrubbing brush on the top there, isn't it? He's a good player though, not a bad player for all that. Brindle hits it, easy. Two, three yards pass, never troubled Paul Leesk at all. Of course, Paul Leesk back in goal, he's been working he's working away, hasn't he? But he's uh, back in today. Yes, I felt, I felt a wee bit sorry for Joe Barber, missing out today, but uh, yeah, I think he just went with a bit of experience in goals. Mm -hmm. uh, Leesk's been excellent most of the season, and as you say, the last few weeks he's been away working, so... Uh, but it's the old adage, James, there's no substitute for experience, really, is there? Especially in a day like today. Absolutely. You can't, it's difficult to understand when you're a young loon, mm -hmm. but uh, once you're a bit older, you, certainly, you, you, you can certainly understand what the, yeah. what the managers refer to the experience. Yeah, yeah. See how that ball held up, and we'll see where this one goes. See if Liske can get it further up the pitch. Well, he, he, uh, he got it further into the crowd. And the wind's certainly getting up. It sure uh, is. Which may, may help in the second half if they can harness it. They're about 12 deep over that far side, James. The Rangers game, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I remember that one. I remember that one. I think Jamie wanted a, a goal ruled out that, that night, didn't he? <laughs> that's, that's right. That's right. 
We'll talk about some of the characters later on. We've got a wee break, the likes of Scotty Murray and Molby. Were you in that trip to Bressweir in France? I had a broken leg, but I was still there. That's right, I remember <laughs> that. I was, I was over there. Charlie Duncan and I were interviewed on French radio. In, in French, would you believe? And Charlie didn't speak a, a word of French. It was really entertaining. Uh, that was a, that was one of my one of my second trip away with the Brock. It was one you certainly wouldn't forget. Well, I, I was doing it at that time. I was at Murray for radio, and I I was sponsored by Aden Park Car Sales. So every time I came in with a link from Bressweir, it was thanks to Dodo Murray, the late great <laughs> Dodo Murray, the heart of gold. Dodo, he's absolutely, a lovely man. Absolutely. Sadly missed. The father of Scotty Murray and of course Moby. <laughs> <laughs> Say no more. Moby was some player though. Wasn't he just? Ah, he got better as he got older. I remember he went to Bucky yeah. and Bucky thought, well, then I want this ex Devon and Vale Fraser of a player. We hate him. Oh. And within three games, they loved him. Ah, he was a great character but an excellent player. Wasn't he just? Of course, Scotty's still involved at uh, Bristol City. Aye. And I spoke Kit to Scotty for quite a while but uh, yeah, yeah, he's still enjoying life down there. Yeah, Kitman, I think, under 15 coach. They played yesterday, so I wouldn't be surprised if Scotty was lugging in tonight as today as well. I wouldn't surprise me. If you are, Blackard, nice to talk to you. <laughs> yeah, the game's a wee bit stale. It is, it, it's, uh, it's, it's a wee bit flat. At the moment, aren't yeah. Yeah, I, think I think the wind's playing a part, James. Uh, it's playing a bigger part than we thought, I think. Mm -hmm. Yep. It's difficult to get the ball down and uh, get the passing going. Yeah. Well, then again, that free, that free kick from right out the park. Right out the park, yeah. Of course, it's, Bri it's uh, Brian's testimonial, of course. Brian Hayes' testimonial. He's got his golf outing tomorrow. I hope it will be well attended. I'm sure it will be. Uh, I think it's fully booked. So, uh, yeah, I hope he gets a nice day as well. Brilliant. W very well deserved. Been a oh, great seven. Great from seven, club. James. Uh, yep. Yeah, yeah. Great player as well. Yeah, very much so. Dead ball expert Ryan Cowie there. Young Kieran Simpson, excellent player. Reads the game so well for a young man. Bit more pace than his dad, Mark Simpson, possibly. Had he? A wee uh, bit more I don't pace. know, I don't know. His dad was some player. Not much between them. He's a good player, Mark. Uh, oh, excellent. Good player, Mark. He may have been a wee bit shorter than his son, but he was still excellent in the air. That's right. Some great battles with him at, at New Year with the Brock played the Blue Toon. Oh, the Peter Heed, yeah, yeah. You yeah. miss those games. <laughs> Don't you just. First touch the ball for Scott Barber. But wasn't able to do anything with it. It's bobbling about a wee bit. Grant Campbell can't pick out Ryan Sargent, but uh, ball breaks to Brindle. Looking for support. Oh, that's a bit ambitious. I think he beat me, never mind Paul Lees from there, yeah, but it's, it's a deflection, it's a corner. Corner out of nothing though. Yeah, corner out of nothing. Just in swinger. how much the wind's playing a part though. Very much so. This could be an in-swinger for sure. This will be right under the crossbar, I expect this one, and big Lee Fraser's up for this one. Putting himself about. And it is Lee Fraser. A push. He's pushing, Push. uh, pushing in the back there. Yeah, Lee Fraser and Louis Davidson, I think it was, or Brian Hay. Brian Hay, I think. Yep. You can you can sense the tenseness, James, can't you? Ah, you There's can. A and I think if the, the Fraser players haven't settled down yet. Yep. And they're still a wee bit anxious. And yep. A goal would change all that. Yeah. They're just trying to get rid of the ball too quickly. You see, yep. hold open a wee bit and try and find a man. Yep. And we'll keep our eyes over events elsewhere as well because we could be interesting with with Clark and Bucky. We need to keep an eye on that one as well, don't we? Absolutely. You know, it's it's, uh, it's very very tight. It sure is. Of course, it'll be 25 minutes into that one. No, I was forgetting. Yeah, they've, they've kicked off 15 minutes early. Yeah. Saying earlier on, I may have to revisit my mandate with a fish supper at half past six at Port Nocky, James. If we <laughs> <laughs> go deep into <laughs> deep into injury time here, I went down at fish and chips with Ian Finlay at Finlay's uh, at lunchtime. Wonderful, oh met yeah. with Ian and enjoyed it. You won't, you won't get a bit of fish and chips up oh. in the fridge. Well, I went to the prawns; they were wonderful. Oh, yeah, prawns and batter, absolutely amazing. Yeah, they're good. They're good. And I'll give a shout out to Bobby Cow. Bobby's not with us today, he's not keeping all that well today, but it's uh, 
Well, well, Bobby Cow, a, a very swift recovery. He's a, he's a lovely man. Oh, absolutely. He's a stalwart here at the club. <laughs> very much Keeps so. Keeps the ground in great condition. Yep. And, uh, and fellow director with you, of course. I never knew you were a director until I, I, I made some inquiries. Yeah, but I've st- I haven't been involved now for about a year. Uh huh. Yeah, work commitments and whatever, so yeah. yeah, I haven't been doing too much yeah. around the club. But proud to be involved, I'm sure. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Brindle again. He's a, first he's a pest, he's a danger. That's a good shot. Yeah, a and well picked out. Has been played. Yeah, he made space for himself and well pucked out there by Paul Leesk. Now you're not going to be embarrassed about this. Scott Murray just put a picture of the team that won the league 20 years ago on Twitter. <laughs> So I think I think Scotty will be logged in for uh, sure. Absolutely, <laughs> cheering the boys on. That's for sure. <laughs> That's a great ball, Paul Campbell. Oh, just got underneath it, James. Yeah, first decent bit away from Fraser. I just get just go on underneath the ball there. But, uh, if the I was affecting the net the balls there. Yeah, if, 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 if they can just keep the ball on the deck, then they'll they'll create chances, no doubt with that. Still searching for the bucket score. I haven't found it yet. There we go. Clack nil, bucket nil. Solid header by Grant Campbell. He's in the thick of everything, isn't he? He's a, a powerhouse in the middle of the park. Nah, he never gives up. He's a uh, very good footballer, but he knows where to be as well. Yeah, yeah. Reads the game very well. I saw him play his last game for Wick Academy. He lasted 15 minutes in a Scottish Cup tie on Lithgow Rose before he was sent off. They were up 1-0, actually. got beat 5-1, but he was sent off after about 15 minutes. Went straight through a guy. He's capable of that, <laughs> James. <laughs> You need a bit. You need a bit of mix up in this game. <laughs> but uh, I'm sure. I'm sure he's, uh, he'll have his head on today. And he won't get sent off. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. Very important player. And it's a bit like Cove Rangers, of course, as well. Before he went to Huntley and then and then came here. No, it just shows you how talented a player he is. Yeah. Yeah. But he brings a he brings a bit more experience to this this group of players as well, which are all mainly local guys. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Uh, no, he's been a, a great addition. Mm, very much so. That's a better kick by Paul Leesk, but a bit of distance on that one. Oh, one two with uh, Louis Davidson there, but it's cut out by Forrest. It's a big back line they've got for us. Look at, look at the size of the, the two central defenders. They, they, I don't know why, but they always have a big, big team. They're yep. never a small team in. Yeah. 30 years I've been involved in Highland League football. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was looking back at their cup record as well. They've got a great cup record in the Highland League Cup. They have. You look back their, uh, Good cup side. And probably one of the oldest teams in the league. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Fraser were just having to bide their time a little bit and pull them out, create space for themselves. A wee bit of room for Scott Barber this time. Lee Fraser trying to close him down. Ball across! Oh, just cleared for a corner. Great ball across by Barber. <laughs> so who's taking this? I put my money on Ryan Cowie, is it? Yep. Kind of see him past the post there, but... Ryan's taking this corner. Scored the right way corner last week, didn't he? Uh, he did, aye. Uh. It's a great ball in. All right. Stay in the arms of Stuart Knight, though. Well clutched by the keeper. That was a good ball, though. Yeah, we went too close to the keeper, though. He took yep. that very comfortable. Yep. The big lad, 90. 
Elgin boy, of course. Works for the Hydro Board, if I remember rightly. Big short night. Yeah, he's a big guy, that's for yeah, sure. Yeah. Board, yeah. He's only been back about three, four weeks. He was out for about three months with a, a ligament. Uh, it was a calf problem, but he's, he's back in again now. And uh, the other keeper, the other keeper's in loan from Bucky Thistle, of course, uh, Lee Herbert. Well played uh, by Grant Campbell. I oh, thought Paul Young was handed off there, but referee says no. Uh, the referee's let the game go quite well, to be fair. Yeah. There wasn't a huge amount in that, I didn't think. Not, not a lot. There's only one winner there. Yeah. The big high ball's not going to do much with these big lads in the middle, big, big Fraser. And Dale Wood, the ex uh, Rothis fullback as well. He's, he's, he's a big fella as well. How important will the subs be possibly later on? I think it could be. I think it could be very important. If, uh, if things stay the same, I think it's probably the difference between the two sides. Is it? Yeah. The Broke has a a number of players there that can come on and change the game completely. And of course, it could be. It could be, I don't think it will be, it could be uh, Gary Harris's last ever game for the Brock. It'll be his last Highland League game for sure, but hopefully he'll be involved in the, the two playoff games to come. Oh, absolutely, it'd be great. Um, he's been a good servant for Fraser, but he's scored quite a number of goals. He has. Um, his ratio from uh, appearances to goals has been quite good. Oh, it's Brindle in. Oh, well, well taken away by Kieran Simpson. He read that well. Yeah, he did very well there. Yeah. First glimmer of hope at uh, Forrest has had. Yep. Brindle looks quite dangerous, actually. Bad haircut, but good player. <laughs> yeah, he's got a lot of good movement. You <laughs> see that. Long throw here. Probably looking for Brindle and nod it on. It's not going to as far as him. Shot in the turn. It's, well, he's not going to create any problems with that one. That's well wide to the goal. <coughs> Wasn't it just? We've got about eight. We're going about what, 18 minutes, and it's still fairly nervy. Yeah, I've been quite scrappy so far. I haven't seen the. The stand's never been this full in a long time. There's not a seat to be gotten, is there? No, not at all. Well, it's a, pitch a wee bit fiery, and it is, it is uh, breezy as well, and it doesn't help. There we go. Big Barber against Lee Fraser. Barber's going to take him on, go on the byline. Good cross. Well cut out. Lee Fraser tries to complete the clearance. Ball still there. No messing about by Fraser at the back there. I always get mixed up with Lee and his brother Graham, the twins there. One's a bricky and one's a joiner, and I can never remember which one's which. I used to be able to tell them because one used to wear white boots and one used to wear uh, a different coloured boot, but now they wear the same colour of boots, so it's, a, it's not ideal. Of course, both the twins were out for a whole season with bad injuries. It's great to see Lee back and, and Graham as well. Ah, that's that's uh, good to see them back playing, that's for sure. Yeah. But he is, a, he is a hulk of a man, isn't he? Just yeah. I know his father Gilbert, a, a farmer from uh, Butt Hill Farm, the other side of Elgin. Uh, they're, they're farmer's sons, and you can tell they like their porridge, can you? <laughs> That's for sure. I hope the pie shops don't stock plenty of pies today, James, because <laughs> there were some hungry guys come half time. Uh, There's going to be a fair queue as well to go and get a pie, I think. Mm -hmm. have an, an extra pie shop in, though. <laughs> I mentioned before that Daniel Donohoe's in the line. I've never seen him on the line without his gloves on. And he's got gloves on today. He's got black gloves on the far side oh, line. That's Barber in on Stuart Knight. Whoa! Good clearance by Knight. He read that well. He was quickly yeah, off his line. Goal was quickly off his line there, yeah. 
Yeah, I think uh, Bigger got away with a bit of a slack challenge in the middle of the park as well. Did, yep. Yeah, yeah. It was a wee bit of high kind there. It was. Paul Young, captain today. He is, yeah. Willie's on the bench. Uh huh. Dis disappointed. I was hoping Willie would start, but. Uh, yeah. He'll maybe come on. Yeah, I'm sure he'll get an opportunity to show his class. It's not a bad ball. Brindle's on to it. Nah, he's gonna, it's going to go past. Paul Leach lets it go out for a, a goal kick. Yeah, the ball just needs to settle down a wee bit, I think. I know there's a lot at stake, but uh, yeah, yeah, just need to try and get the ball down and past on the ground. I thought Gary Harris was warming up, but he's, he's away to speak to somebody, I think. <laughs> Wait, he's away to Lou. <laughs> I thought he was warming up, he was waiting for a, a B. Well, there you go, Gary, good man. It's maybe a bit of nails. <laughs> <laughs> it could be, it could be. No missing by Grant Campbell, it's come all the way back. Young Simpson needs to win this one, well done indeed. Yeah, for a well, young lad, he doesn't, he doesn't lose money in the air, does he? And he reads it very well as well, he does. doesn't he? Because he's, he's not the fastest, but he's... Uh, yeah, overall he's, he reads the game very well, as you say. Yeah. You'd had many battles with his dad, Mark. Mark, eh? Oh, Mark yeah, yeah. But, uh, Peter Head and Inverurie as well. That's he's right. A, he's a great lad as well, off the park. Aye, Absolutely. very much so. Yeah, very good lad. I met one of your old teammates. I was at a function in Port Sawyer about three, four weeks ago. And I, I thought I recognised this chap sitting opposite me. And he came across and chatted. And as soon as he started to chat, I knew it was Pique. Oh, Pique. Paul Keith. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's here today, he's in the lounge. Is he? Yeah, Marino's there as well. Oh, there's, well a, there's a good contingent of ex-players in the lounge. What, what a player Marino was as well. And Pique, oh, I remember Pique scoring a volley against Peter Head in the Aberdeenshire Cup. And he, he shouldn't have been playing because he wasn't fit and he scored this volley for about 25 yards. You could hardly walk but he scored this goal. What a goal it was. Oh, he was a fantastic player. <laughs> you wouldn't want to argue with Paul. Put his head in, we're not putting the feet in. Brilliant header of a ball. Oh. Nice. It's nice to appreciate the, the, the players from the past that we all know and love. But Marino as well, he had a great career in full-time football with uh, Dundee United and uh, Plymouth. Plymouth, yeah. yeah. No, he did, he did excellent. Great great uh, results at Falkirk as well as Dundee United. Yeah. Yeah, been around. Yeah, very much so. It, it, some great footballers come out of Mintlaw. You've got the, you've got the two Murray brothers, Moby and, and Scotty. You've got Marino. You've got Kim Little. Kim I, I don't Little, know. Yeah. Must be some in the water yeah. in Mintlaw. Keith McCready. Keith McCready. Yeah. Right. Keithy was a strong yeah, player strong as well. Player, yeah. John Thompson. John Thompson. Fantastic little player. Little John. Oh. Great player. Great player. That's <laughs> Kieran Simpson. Take your time. Find your man. There we go. Ryan Sargent's come on a good game the last few weeks. Paul Young in the box. That long leg of Lee Fraser again. Clears the danger. Grant Campbell back to Kieran Simpson. He's looking for Brian Hay. And it's going to go back to Paul, I would imagine. Oh. Yeah, well. Forrest with the wind advantage, of course. Brindle coming back from an offside position. It should be. Food and drink for Louis Davidson. It's not out yet. No oh, danger here, not. Kieran Simpson steps in, clears the danger. Oh, it's great to see Ryan Sargent getting the run of the team as well. It is. He's a, he's a, he's a, was he on loan to Devon Vale last season? I think yeah, he was, wasn't yeah, he? Spell on loan yeah. at Vale. He's came through the link up system as well, which is great to see. Excellent young talent. Leaf Fraser all over. It's got Barber there. Well, he got it. It's Brindle. That's going to run away from him. Goal kick, I would think. Nobody's catching that one. I was going to say for a farmer's son, that was a bit of an agricultural challenge when. Uh, <laughs> yeah, his hands are all over him. Maybe he was. He was all over him like a rash. Michael Stephen, you mentioned Michael lives and uh, works in yeah, Australia he's, now. Yeah, he's in Gladstone, Australia. He's been there for who must be touching nine years, I think. Is now. that right? Did uh, he did he did he work for, for Brucey Buckingham at score? Yeah, yeah he was yeah, score. Still, still works for score. Still was scoring. Ah, still out there. Ah, he's okay. doing very well. Good stuff. 
Fraser wins the ball in the air again. Into in the air, he's going to win, there's no doubt about it. Ah, you're, you're not competing with him in the air. No. Ryan Sargent manages to keep it in, though. It's a blustery win, too, isn't it? Uh, it is. It's having a big impact on the match, to be fair. Mm -hmm. See, the Brock need to get the ball on the ground and play their football, but nobody able to do it so no, far. I don't know why, if it's a wee bit of nerves, but it's been like this the last few weeks, to be fair. They've been mm -hmm. going a bit more route one than they normally would. Yeah. Long clearance from Paul Leeskitz. Paul Campbell underneath it, but didn't manage to get anything on it. Noticing the P and J cameraman over there, he's underneath a, a above a sign saying "Pink Petal." I don't think that's his nickname, is it? He's got a <laughs> <laughs> he's got a red jacket on. But Pink Petal, it is. Now here we go, Sergeant on the left. He's going to hit it. He's going to set up Ryan Cowie. Cowie with the ball. It's back to Sergeant. Danger cleared once more. Of course, Forest without their skipper today, Ma Martin Grote. Martin became a dad during the week, so he's got other business to look after today. Many congratulations to Forest skipper Martin Grote and his new Oops. baby, I think daughter. Ah, congratulations. Forest are in this game, James. They're not lying down, are they? There's very little between the two sides. You know, in 25 minutes. Fairly harsh there. Uh, judging that Ryan Coe used a hand. Big Fraser going to go up for this one for sure, isn't he? He, he just about tripped over the referee there. Did you know it's that one? The referee tripped him, gave the ref a yellow card. He just stole about four yards there. Now nah, they're making him take it back. Callum Johnson with a free kick, looking to pick out Lee Fraser. He'll send this to the penalty spot, I'd imagine. It's exactly where it goes. It's a corner. It's a good ball. Now I take it you're going to go back into hospitality for a wee break at half time. Yeah, let's have a nice little. Well, cup take of it, Paul. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have a, a wee word with the uh, retiring Highland League secretary, if I can, Rod Houston's going to have a wee word with about his time in Highland League football. Yeah, he's been a good servant over the years. So who's taking over from Rod? John Campbell. You might not remember the name, a referee, a Highland League referee from Lossiemouth. John Campbell has taken over in the summertime. Nice guy from Lossiemouth, John Campbell. And he's a good referee in his day. I think he's only going to be our seventh ever. Highland League secretary because John Grant before Rod served for 40 years before him Charlie Fraser served for 50 years would you believe? It's incredible is it? Unbelievable yeah. And yeah, the Highland League continues to develop now the promotion as well up. It's, it's a great it's thing I think going isn't it? Forward, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah you can't stand still Of course next Saturday will be the first leg of the playoffs Banks of D against Fort William mm -hmm. at Spain Park and then the following week at Clagan Park you can't. You can only see one winner there, can you? That's well. Oh, the fourth. Well, come on, a game lately. Yeah, they've, they've had some results today. Yeah. A win last week. First so. one there. First win the season yeah. the other night. I remember being at Claggan Park many, many years ago. There wasn't a huge crowd, and your mum won the raffle, James. <laughs> yeah. That's a yeah. That's a few years ago. Six, yeah, it wasn't yesterday. Been years since I stopped playing. It wasn't yesterday. Yeah. Your mum won the raffle that yeah. day. The, the best thing about Fort William was the bus journey home. Lovely scenery, wasn't it? Oh, lovely. Beautiful Especially making back through uh, Avi Moore. Yeah. I remember going through one day with, with, with Dodo, Dodo Murray. Uh, Dodo wasn't able to drive, and, and uh, I was going to the game anyway. So, can you get a lift? And I went through with Dodo. We had a, we had a really lovely lunch on route, and we stopped for tea on the way home. I just, I thought he was a lovely, lovely man, was Dodo. Uh, was That's about, yeah, he's offside. You can see when he fed him that uh, Scott Barber was just offside. Yeah, I think he was a yard off there. Yep. 
linesman calls it right. Yeah. Mark's getting a wee bit un anxious on the sideline there, I think. Get it is, that's half an hour gone and uh, not a clear cut chance, I wouldn't say, James. No, so far. No, not at all. We'll try and find how things are going at Grant Park in Inverness between Clachna Curran and Bucky, see if we can get an, any updates. Well, keeping our eye on what's happening here, of course. Good skill by Ryan Sargent there. Still clack nil, bucky nil as far as I'm aware. That's good, that's good for Fresima, good news for Fresima so far. Just need to get that all important goal and I think if they get a goal, I think they'll get a few. Yeah, that, that, that's typically what happens this season, once they get going, they get mm -hmm. a goal, they get one or two, they've got goals from all over the park when they get going. Yep. Crowds are a wee bit quiet as well. I think they the are. The amount they of are. people here will get a bit more behind the team. Yeah, I think they're getting a wee bit tense, a wee bit worried. Yeah. Maybe they need half time to come as well to, to recharge the batteries and gather their thoughts. And I'm sure Mark Cowie will be. I don't know what Mark will say at them at half time. Maybe just keep doing what you're doing, boys. Get the ball down and ground and maybe harness the wind for the second half. Yeah, I think a wee bit more composure and belief in yourself, you know. Yeah. As you say, he's got all these guys that in the bench that come on and make a big difference. Uh, the way it's going, the, the subs out will be more and more important, I think, in the, the half time. Yeah. And as the second half uh, yeah. goes on. Yeah. That's a good ball by Jamie Bigley. Scott Barbara didn't know where it's going, but it's a uh, corner kick. No messing by Lee Fraser, he just cleared it away for a corner. Big guns, Brian Hay coming up, Kieran Simpson coming up from the back. Paul Young drops off to the edge of the box. Ball comes in. It's ahead of a Kieran Simpson, just a yard past. That's probably good, the best good. chance of the match so far. It was. Almost a free header. Didn't pick him up, did it? No, he was on his own. A good run, a good ball. You weren't about when they broke won the league for the first time in 1931-32, were you? No, 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 just a few you years later. You weren't even a twinkle. You were, you, were, <laughs> <laughs> you were at the last time, though. You were skippering the side at the last time. <laughs> I think I may be reported in that first one. I, don't know. I think the second one, 36, was it? 1936 was it? 30, 38 was it, 30 the second eight. one, yep. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think Elgin City were second that year. There was only about 14 teams in the league that time. I think the first time you won it, there was only 12 teams, but you still got to win it, James. Oh, that's it. But it was in four, I think it was the 1950s that we was top of the league when the season didn't end. Yeah, my hometown, my hometown beat you in a playoff. Rothers beat you in a playoff at Borough Briggs, if I remember rightly. I was five. Or maybe six. Five. <laughs> season 58, 59, <laughs> 59 Rothers won the league for the first time in their history by beating Fraser in a playoff at Elgin in front of about 8,000 people, would you believe, in midweek. It's unbelievable, is it? Uh, yep. I was in the crowd the day Elgin beat our growth in the Scottish Cup. There's 14,000 inside Borough Briggs that day. Uh, there's just too much distractions now. You only had football on that day, you see. Well, there was nothing else you could do. <laughs> no supermarkets to go to. No. One channel on TV. Right. Wrestling at four o'clock with Kent Walton. That was it. <laughs> As gentlemen in front, you I'm know. I'm showing that. my age now, boys. <laughs> it's a ball. Come on then. Well, Paul Young almost got in that, but he gets a corner blocked by Stuart Knight's legs. Right, look for a good delivery from Cowie for this one. Big boys are up again. Ten minutes, eleven minutes to half time. If we just come into the the live stream, we kicked off here 15 minutes late to allow the crowd in. 3:15 the kickoff time here at Bellsley. So, Ryan Cowie looking for 
pick out some of the big guns this time. Great ball. And the header. Oh, just over from Brian Hay. Just crashed the crossbar. It's a good delivery and a great header. Uh, great delivery again. Ryan's improved season by season with his delivery. That was, that was unfortunate there. Great header. And again, a free header. Nobody picked him up. Well won by Kieran Simpson. Good distance on his head arm. I think your brokers are starting to, to get more involved and they are. get further forward yeah. in the game. Paul Campbell in a more wider position tonight today so far, isn't he? Barber now through the middle. Sargent going wide left. As you say, Bigri's always a danger up there as well, isn't he? Sorry? Bigri can be a danger up there as well. Yeah, with his height. His Absolutely. height's good in the air. Yeah. Just there, it's nil nil at half time with Bucky. Nil nil half time, there we go. Thank you, James. Clack nil, Bucky nil. Not a bad result so far at half time, that for the Brock. Of course, we're 15 minutes later here. Go take your heart off the bucket to some extent. 23 wins in a row is unbelievable. Unbelievable, unbelievable. You know? I mean, Frisbee's record, and they still think it's been down to the final day with what they've done. Is That's just right. again, it's still think they're a bit fortuitous to beat my hometown team, Rothis, with a wonder goal after 89 minutes. He could have done that overhead kick for 24 hours and never got it in oh, once. Oh, that was. Yeah? I didn't have to keep things going, I suppose, but yeah, it was a wonder strike. It was that. Well won by Kieran Simpson, looking for Paul Campbell. But his ball's beaten to it. Ball's come into the box. Well won. Well won by. Oh, it's taken off of him. Sergeant loses out there. Callum Johnson with the ball. Looking for Brindle wide on the right. What can he do? Taking on Ryan Kelly. Looking for a corner, I think. Ball comes across. That's okay. Goal kick. Jack Grant not able to turn it across goal. He was looking for a corner, but I don't think it was. Eight minutes to the break, and still goal is here at uh, a buzzing Bellsley. But as you said, the crowd have gone a wee bit quiet. Yeah, they're a wee bit quiet. Yeah, I think the game just needs a bit of, a, a bit of, a, a bit of skill from someone to get it going. What I've always wondered, how did you get the nickname Babadoo? <laughs> I've always wanted to ask you, James, is there a long story there or is it a short story? No, no, really. Did you like wee pigeons when you were a wee boy? My father was a... he, he uh, had pigeons. Had he? Uh, he did that for 50 odd years. Pigeon fancier? Uh, he just just recently got rid of these, these pigeons, but I was little, my dad had pigeons, so... Baba do. Thank you for sharing that, James. Still can't get rid of it though, that's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, uh, looking Paul, Paul Young looking to put the ball through, but they're just, Forrest are marking well, man to man, aren't they? Yeah, there's not much between it, um, they're closing down well, they're two banks are four, mm -hmm. and the two up front, so it's, it's pretty tough to get to get by them, they sure need it's to get the ball down that wide. It sure is, it sure is. That's a nice flick on by Barber to Sargent. Forrest Ball, though, it came off of uh, Ryan Sargent as he went past his man. It's getting a wee bit dull out there. I hope the rain stays off because they're going to get guys soaked over the far corner. It's a great addition, this hospitality suite at the far end, James, isn't it? Oh, it's great. The Bruce Buchan it's hospitality suite. Yeah, it's sold out every week as well. You can hold about 140 in there, can't yeah, you? Yeah, 140. Unbelievable. Yeah. I've never been in it. I've been a look in the in door. It? I've never been in it. Maybe oh. a director will invite me in sometime. I <laughs> know. <laughs> ah, <laughs> uh, there's nobody leaves there with a, a straight walk, isn't it? I can imagine. <laughs> like when there, you need a driver, do you? Uh, absolutely. What's he doing? He's making the th throw in again, is he? Yeah, the ball's back on the pitch there, though. It's a, that's a yeah, bit of a two problem. balls in the pitch. Yeah. No, that was putting a good ball by Paul, and it's Brind the other Paul, Paul Brindle, looking to cause a problem at this end. Leeskey, Leeskey stayed on his line, but well cleared by Kieran Simpson. 
Yeah, it's well played with Ryan Hay. Yeah. But Brindle's a danger. He is a danger. He's fast as well. Mm -hmm. He's strong. Well done by Grant Campbell. But again, it's a forest defence. Uh, Two banks of four, as you say. Difficult to get through that. Uh, no, the Frizz was just giving the ball away quite cheaply. Now he gave it away there too. Come on. Whoa. The natives are getting a wee bit restless, James. No, they are. They're, 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 not, they're not too much to shout about, to be fair. No, we're within five minutes of the break now. But nil no, nil's no, not a bad score. No. It's still in your hands, isn't it? That's the main thing. We're looking to make progress on the left. The ball, bounce the ball. And a handball! It's a handball by Lee Fraser! Under pressure from Scott Barber. The ball bounces up, hits Lee Fraser on the hand. And referee Graham Beaton says it's a penalty kick. Yeah, it's, it's a wee bit soft, but we'll take it. It was soft, it was but as soft. you say, James, you will yeah, take we'll it. certainly take it. To so, be fair to you, and you didn't realise where the ball was. So who's going to take it then? Paul Campbell? Yeah, Paul Campbell's got the ball lined up. Yeah, Four minutes to the break. 41 minutes gone. Seven couldn't be better. Paul Campbell stepping up to take this penalty kick and know. that could settle all the nerves around him. Yeah, Nervy Bellsley. Paul Campbell against Stuart Knight. Campbell steps up, right footed. And scores! Oh! Scored! Well done! Paul Campbell sends the ball below Stuart Knight in the 41st minute. And the Brock have got the breathing space. Fraser Brock 1. Forest Mechanics nil. Yeah, it was a well taken penalty there. He did it, and it was underneath the goalkeeper yeah. in the middle of the goal. Yeah, he couldn't get down in time for that one. I think that is. A wee bit of black and white smoke, yes, uh huh. Something like that. Yeah, someone just lit a cigar. <laughs> As you say, softish, but it was a probably was a penalty. Bounced up. Yeah, it bounced up. To be fair, the barber is all over the top of him, looking for yeah. a half a chance, so. If it was a given against you, you might be a wee bit. Uh, You'd be a bit annoyed, I think. Yeah. But that's the goal. That's the goal that Fraser needed to hopefully settle all those nerves before the break. Oh! Somebody went flying there. Did you see that? Is that James Duthie caught that flare? I think James Duthie got the flare and put it out. Yeah, some idiot. Some idiot. That's a flare flare up in a technical area. <laughs> James did well to deal with that. Well, I think that goal could make all the difference to the Brock in the in the second half. They've got it. They're ahead. Hopefully they'll settle down. Barber down. again. Good Fraser. No oh, referee judges it. Scott Barber held up Lee Fraser. Best, best uh, six and a half, isn't there, James? Wasn't it? Uh, I think the referee got a spot on. To be fair. Barber's a master at holding on. Isn't he just? He is, he's a master. Nice pair of boots though. Never had boots in like those in your days, did he? His mother must not be playing today. <laughs> like a pair of slippers then, aren't they? I wouldn't wear them. Fraser needed that goal. Set on the nerves. There's a lot of a lot of smiles and a lot of faces round about us now, James. Yeah, it's give everyone a wee bit of a buzz. A bit fortuitous, I think, but uh, yeah, a bit harsh for for, uh, for Forrest to be one 0 down at half time, but uh, we'll take that. That's for sure. Very much so.
Did I spot Neil Clark, the ex-Presbury goalkeeper in the, in the coaching squad earlier on today? Did I see Clarky over there, Sparky? Maybe I'm imagining no, things. No, I don't think I've seen Neil over there. He comes to every game, Aye. most games, to be fair. I met, I met him at Rotherham. I see Alec Mayer there. and, and uh, Alex good, Mayer. Good coach, Alec, isn't he? Yeah, a great servant again. Been yeah. here for a long, long time. Very much so. Yeah, James Duthie is quite quiet in the background, but does a lot of good stuff for the club as well. Yeah, yeah, he sure is. Baxter. Yeah. James Duthie, the quiet man. Remember when I, before I retired the P&J, had to get the team using a Friday. Always managed to get James. <laughs> Very tricky, I get sometimes getting... <laughs> getting get a the hold manager. Of Mark. Yeah, getting a hold of Mark. So yes, busy, man, busy man, but James always picked you, up the phone. You must interview quite a lot of managers over your time. Oh, aye. Ever Not so just slightly. In League. Ever so slightly, James, yeah. Ever so slightly. <laughs> I started as assistant groundsman at Rothis when I was ten years old, and I used to get used to get sixpence from Uncle, who was a groundsman. And after <laughs> after three months, the committee said, "How much did he give you?" I said, "Sixpence." I said, "We gave him thirty bob." The committee took a decision last night. You're on half a crown as assistant groundsman, officially paid by the the committee. So I was I was a rich man, half a crown in those days, in 1963. I didn't realise you've been involved as long as that. Aye. You, you had a good career yourself, you played in goals. Yeah, I went Scotland on to play, internationals. I played scuba international yeah. for Scotland against Wales under 18s and against England under 18s. Drew 0 0 against England at Airdrie um, in front of 18,000. And if Willie Pettigrew had missed three sitters, would have beaten him 3 nothing. But never mind, <laughs> that was. And I went on and played for Rothes, Elgin City, then Rothes yeah. after that, and then Rothes Decimals. We've got a collision there. Yeah, he's We've got a collision. Between two Fraserburgh players. So Grant Campbell and Ryan Cowie, is it? No, Ryan Sargent. Ryan Sargent and Grant Campbell. Grant Campbell's flat and flat out in his face. I think Ryan Sargent's okay. He got in the neck. I don't know where Grant, where uh, Grant Campbell got hit. Was it? Uh, I think just in the face. I think. Was it his face? Yeah. They just ran into each other, didn't they? Yeah, he'll be okay though. Breed him tough and wick. <laughs> <laughs> He's a tax advisor, you know. Nobody is. That's his yeah, job. He's a tax accountant. advisor. Have you, have you ever got loads of money? He's uh, your man. Uh, <laughs> I've been doing the lottery often enough. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. <clears throat> That's the half time whistle. That's a half time whistle. Fraser with a one. Forest Mechanics nil. Half time. Thanks to that day. Uh, 40 first minute penalty when the ball hit Lee Fraser on the hand and Paul Campbell slotted home the penalty kick for Fraserborough so as the players toot off for a well deserved cup of tea I've got a legend of Highland League football coming up a word of me for a couple of minutes before he goes for his cup of tea and himself I've got retiring Highland League secretary Rod Houston. Rod, it's a delight to have you at Bellsley and it must warm your heart to see such a huge crowd inside Bellsley this afternoon Yes. Yeah, a special day for you, Rod, because it's a it's a domestic game. It's your final Highland League uh, uh, game as secretary, and you've had six years. And I th think it, it's been a it's been a difficult six years with COVID coming in, lockdown, and everything like that. It's probably been six of the most difficult years we've ever had to see in Highland League football. But I'm sure you've enjoyed every minute. <laughs> and I do like a challenge. Yes. And I think that's really important. Can I just mention to the viewers, have a look out on the pitch. All these kids that are taking part in the community. Isn't it wonderful? That's another sign of what this club means to the community and does for the community. But back to this old man, leaving, <laughs> leaving office. Uh, it's, it's, it's been a privilege to work with the people I've worked with in the Highland League. They are absolutely fantastic army of volunteers. And to see the season reach the last day with the championship still in doubt has just been wonderful, especially as this is our first full on season mm -hmm. since the pandemic yeah. hammered us. Mm -hmm. It's not only administration you've been involved with in Highland League, Rod. You, you, you've had a, a, a career with uh, several clubs as well over the years in uh, Highland League. Yeah, not quite as many clubs as Tiger Woods has. <laughs> and again, it was always interesting, it was always entertaining. 
and the coaching aspect was something I really enjoyed mm -hmm. and working especially with younger players and seeing them develop into mature professional footballers. Yeah. And of course you've led them as well in your role as a, a leading organiser of schools football in Scotland. Of course, you ran the Highland Football Academy for several years also, Rod. Have you been reading my CV online? No, no, no. I've known you a long time, pal. <laughs> yeah, that was... You, you were talking about challenges in the Highland League. Actually, getting that commissioned and off the ground was the biggest single challenge I've ever faced in my professional life. There were all sorts of issues, which I'll spare you the detail, and uh, some of which can't be described yeah, or explained. Yeah, yeah. But getting it up and running and operating in a manner that helped football in the Highlands, I think has been quite a, quite something, and I'm very proud of what it did, yeah. and is continuing to do. Yeah. In fact, on the pitch here at Forest Team, there are a number of products of it, yeah. so it's, it's now helping to provide the game in the Highlands with young footballers and people with healthy activity. Excellent. Now tell us a little bit about your successor, uh, former referee. Yeah, well, somebody has to come from the dark side from time to time. <laughs> John Campbell, I think, is an estimable successor and is very interested, gets what the Highland League's about, is an able administrator, has been involved in running the game after refereeing, and I think he will bring his own style and his own persona to it, and I think he will inherit an organisation that he'll, he'll feel he can take his time to work with and enjoy working with, because as I say, right as I said earlier, populated with such fine people. And I'm sure you're stepping right down, Rod, and, and much of your spare time in the future may be taking up with playing more golf at the, over those magnificent links at Golfsby. Well, yes, that's another part of my life I'm very proud of, is Golfsby Golf Club and where it's at and what it does. But uh, I have to say that nowadays I'm afraid it's more bad golf rather than more golf. Um, but it's still a great pleasure and I look forward to having more time. So, for example, on a day like today, if I didn't have to go 160 miles, I could play six holes in the morning and then go to a game in the afternoon. But rest assured, I'll still be populating a space in Highland League grounds. Bad golf, I can empathise with. Rod, can I wish you, on behalf of me and of course every fan of Highland League football, a very happy and a healthy retirement. Thanks for your time. Well, Very kind of you, Rod. I'll let you go and get your cup of tea now, my friend. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen out there, Mr. Rod Houston. Okay, folks, we may have had a technical hitch with that interview with Rod Houston. I don't know. I've got a strange feeling you were hearing me, but you weren't able to hear Rod. But, well, uh, if, it, if that was the case, we really do apologise. I'm sorry about that. Hopefully you heard most of what Rod said, but we never know. Anyway, I'm going to take a very, very quick comfort break. I'm looking at the toilet block down there. Huge clues, so I'll be back in about two or three minutes with a bit of luck. Speak to you shortly.
Now, well, folks, uh, welcome back to the start of the second half. I was right, there was a huge queue at the loo, but never mind, we're, we're back in one piece. So, is there milk in there? And I've just been handed a, a cup of tea. So, uh, young Jack behind me is giving me a cup of tea. Well done, young man. Is that a good pie you're eating? Oh, your sausage roll. Is it good? You had a pie as well. Oh, good man, young Jack. Ten years old. He's well, well trained. He's had a pie and a sausage roll. I got a sausage roll, mind you. It was fine. Anyway, we're about to start the second half. That penalty goal by Paul Campbell. In the 41st minute, I think may have settled the Brock's nerves with the wind at their backs in the second half. You would like to think that Fraser maybe add to their tally. Who knows though? It could still be a tense 45 minutes to see if Fraser can win their fourth ever Highland League title. Referee Graham beating trots out. We sip of my tea there. Very welcome. I don't see any changes at half time. Don't see any substitutions so far. And with the wind at their backs, I expect to see Fraser doing quite a bit of attacking this half. There's young Mr. Geddes coming back. Here you go, James. <coughs> nice cup of tea. Yeah, it was a lovely cup of coffee. That boy. <laughs> Nate, I really need it. <laughs> good, good man. <laughs> good man. So, I was just saying that uh, with the wind at the back, I set to see Fraser doing quite a bit of attacking. Yeah, I think so. They'll get the ball forward quite quickly. Just hope they don't overrun the ball. That goal just four minutes before half time from the penalty really settled the nerves, didn't it? It's yeah, I think so. Uh, I know the Bucky's now up 2 0. Bucky's up? Up 2 0. Are they now? Yeah, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Plus another goal here. The next 15 minutes, I think, should settle the turn. Yes, settle that's right, because goal difference, a two goal swing, a two goal advantage for Isbra have over Bucky. Yeah, I'm not quite sure if the worst came to that, if they end up with the same goal difference. Because oh, it goes to goal I've yet scored. to find that out. I th that was my thought. It would go yeah. to the, the most goals scored would, yeah. would uh, carry sway. Nobody's confirmed that to me as yeah, yet, though, James. I'm sure that would be a playoff like you used to have in the, the days gone by. Yeah, yeah. Right, ball coming in across. Here we go. Whoa, young Kieran Simpson misses out there. But it's a phrase of a throw on the far side. Oh, Ryan will sprint over and take a throw as well as the corner. <laughs> it looks like it. He's trotted <laughs> from one side to pitch the other. He's going to go for a long throw. I think it with the wind behind his good distance. Kieran Simpson nods it on. Comes to Barber. Oh, did it hit his hand? The referee says no. <coughs> Nod on by Jamie Bigry. Ryan Sargent looking to spread it wide. He does. Back to Ryan Cowie, back to Grant Campbell. Nice little triangles being played there. Fraser was holding possession a bit better now. Barber lays it off to Sergeant. Oh, Lee Fraser cuts it out. Yeah, it was unlucky there, and they get the ball across, but it was. Uh, nice piece of play, piece of passage. But if Fraser, Fraser were pressure though. It's starting to brighten up weather wise as well. Uh, the crowd's getting a bit bouncing about. Bit Involved as well. Yep. Big Knight grabs it there. He's some size of keeper, is he? It's a big one. Uh, yeah, they wouldn't have scalped off the back of heat for him. He's been a good servant for Fraserborough, eh, for Forest Mechanics over the years. He was at Devon Vale for a season at the start of his career, and he was at, uh, with Elgin City for a year as well. He's an Elgin boy. It's 
a great ball there for That's a great ball. Kieran. Great ball there, Campbell. No, just looking. couldn't get control of it. No. Just couldn't get anything on it. I think Mark Cowie will be a happier man at the break then. Oh, I think so. Yeah, the, next, the next goal here is so important. It is. It is. What an achievement for Mark if he leads his team to the Highland League title, especially it's been so tight with Bucky, but he's following the footsteps of his, his mentor, Charlie Duncan. Yeah, I mean, it's what's that, six years I think he's now been in the post, so he's done well. Team's improved year on year. Yeah. There's a great flick on by Barber. Paul Campbell, but well, well collected. A brave dive yeah, by Stuart Knight. Quick. He's a big lad, but he's off his line very, very quickly there. No, he did well there, the keeper. But it's a more encouraging second start to the second half for Fraserburgh. It certainly is. Looking much more lively. That's coming back to him. And that's going to go for a corner. Uh, Forrest has just reels in yeah. how difficult it is with the wind. They're going to struggle to get out of half this half, I would think. Scott Barber taking the corner from this side. No Ryan Cowie this time. It's a good ball in, though. Uh, referee spotted a push by Bigri, I think. Yeah, I didn't see that. Not sure what happened there. Didn't see it at all. Yeah. Certainly wouldn't have pushed a goal, eh? <laughs> no. And Jamie Beagley's pushed up a good bit more further forward this half as well. He certainly has, and he's a danger there. Uh. Expect Kieran Simpson to win this one, and he does. Almost playing in the hole there between midfield and up front. Yeah, yeah. Paul Young having a quiet game by his own yeah, stance. A great ball in. Quiet. Oh, that was a good. No, I wasn't. Yeah, I don't think it was a pass back. He just stuck out a leg, didn't he? Ah, no, I say a pass back. Even Franco Baresi wouldn't have managed that. <laughs> <laughs> dashing might have. Remember dashing? <laughs> I remember last time Dashing did that against Goldsby. <laughs> <laughs> but lost 1 0 in the Scottish Cup. Yeah, he scored the own goal, that's uh, right. Four, uh, dashing, uh, Brian, uh, Brian, uh, no, no, uh, Alan Thompson. Alan Thompson. Alan Thompson. Oh. Brian Thompson was somebody else. Ah, <laughs> uh, Lugs. Luggies. No. <laughs> Probably one of, if not even the best strikers the league's ever seen. There we go. We're reminiscing in the past, and it's a future that counts, and the, the present, of course. And of course, the, the reward for winning the League of Prism, do win the league, is a a two-game playoff with uh, Bonnie Ray Rose, and that won't be easy, James. No, it won't. They've, they've won the league quite comfortable. They showed a, a reasonable Scottish Cup run as well, so there'll be a strong tie. Um, not much between the sides, I don't think. No. Nope. And nope. then the winners will face Cowdenbeath. Well, it looks like Cowdenbeath, like, doesn't it? And yeah. Unless Elgin, uh, Elgin need a point this afternoon to be safe. Yeah, I think it'll be Cowdenbeath as well, face. Well, I was there when Cowdenbeath beat Cove in that infamous game all those years ago. And it was, uh, it won't be easy down there, that's for sure. No, it won't. There's, uh, it's just, I watched Cowden Beef, it was it last season against Peterhead, and uh, there wasn't too much between the sides, they were big and physical as well, so that won't be an easy tie. Yeah. There we go then, Ryan Cowie, who's he looking to feed? Ryan Sargent, is it? Cutting in, Sargent onto his other foot. Back to Grant Campbell, Louis Davidson. There's somebody wide, can't see in the corner past the pole, but the... Ah, before Campbell's out wide. Was that? Yeah. Campbell. Oh. Whoa! Stuart Knight almost spills it at Jamie Beagree's feet there. Almost. Big keeper got down well and almost spilled it. Well, the Brock's playing the ball a bit better. They're playing the feet. They are. Moving Forrest around a bit more. Right. And keeping on the deck. Yeah. It was food and drink to Big Fraser in the first half, wasn't it? Ah, just played it at his hands, playing high balls. Yeah. I think Fraser were thinking of freshening it up, but they were quite happy to hold what they've got at the moment and just uh, see how it goes for a wee while. Yeah, I think they've had a more positive start. I think they won't change nothing yep. in the first 15 minutes. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Off a big game, just in the keeper's hands, simply there.
warms the heart to see a crowd like this inside Belsley in the last game of the season, doesn't it? Oh, it's fantastic. It'd be great to see this every week, though, wouldn't yeah, it? Yeah, wouldn't it? Wonder wonderful. Yeah. That's going to work. Louis Davidson to Paul Campbell. Davidson looking for the cross ball in. Oh, that one didn't come off his hand, though. Bow! Scott Barber heads over. Just wouldn't just come down get, for him. Couldn't get above it, could he? No, it wouldn't come down. No. No. But the Brooks had a, great, a far better start this half. Much better start, yeah. James. Much better start. They're looking more relaxed yeah. on the ball. Yeah. Get another goal, they'll start to enjoy themselves. Another goal would make a huge difference, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would do. Here and just getting under the ball there. Yep. Yeah, yeah. There's 3 0 for Bucky now up at uh, Grand Street Park in Inverness. Fort William beating Fort William beating Debronville. But maybe the game against Bank City Fort William may not be as one-sided as many would expect. I think it all depends on what the score is at Spain Park next Saturday. I think so. I think it's. Uh, I don't know if Fort William signed a few more players at the tail end of the season. The hub. Uh, the hub. Yep. Yep. Uh, you know they've had a really tough season as well, having to play all their games away from home. Yes, it most certainly. Help, and then so people, some people forget that. Uh, that doesn't help. It's yep. a big commitment from the, the local guys. Yep. When I say Fort William 1, Devon and Vale Vail 0, it's at Banff, of course. So yeah. it's Devon Vale 0, Fort William 1. Yeah, Forrest just struggling to get out there in half a wee bit this half. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll give you a wee update if you're watching anywhere in the world for the hind league scores at the moment. It's Bo Rangers 1, Keith 0. Clack 0, Bucky Thistle 3. For Martin 1, my hometown Rothis 0. <laughs> Fort William 1, Devon Vale 0. But that's Devon Vale 0, Fort William 1. It's at Banff. Lossiemouth 0, Brecon City 2, Nairn County 4, Turf United 2, Sussbury 0, Locos 1, and Wick Academy 2, Huntley 4. Loads of goals. Just the one here at Bellsley, though, one that matters. Paul Campbell's 41st minute penalty. So Rothers have had a good season. They've tailed Rothers off the last few weeks, but they have had a good season. But they're going to finish either 6th or 5th, and... Uh, they hadn't won a cup for more than 40 years, but Ross Jacks won two in the last two seasons, so he's done magnificently well for Rothis. That's good to see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Albeit I'm slightly biased, but I'm pleased to see it also. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great league at the moment, though. You know, James, I, over the years we've lost some wonderful sides. Oh, there's Barber! Oh, no. We've lost, we've lost Peterhead, we've lost Elgin, we've lost Ross County, Cali, yeah, Thistle. Um, Thistle as well, yeah, and Elgin City. So yeah. the league's done well to, to keep pace and, and bring other sides in, haven't they? No, it is, and it's important. Yeah. Barbara yeah. holding off the challenge. Corner kick. Yeah. And it, it's great to see the likes of Cali Thistle doing so well. Ross, County. Ross County's up there. Yeah. I only ever played at Ross County in, uh, once uh, before uh, they moved up. And the same with Inverness Cali. Yeah. That was a great little wee stadium at Old Telford oh, Street. Telford Street. Wonderful stadium. Yeah. Barber's corner kick. Brian Hay. And it's Kieran Simpson. It's over the top. Yeah, that was a chance. Ross, Ross County's old stand used to hold about 120 people. And then I remember it took about 10 seconds to knock down my bulldozer. It was tiny, the old wooden stand. stand. <laughs> now, I just played there the once. I think we got, we got beat 2 1 way back about 92, 93, something like that. It's a nice ground as well, Ross County. Yeah. Yeah. And your old rivals have done quite well, Peter Head. Yeah, they do, they do well. They move up and down between Division 2 and Division 1. They do. Uh, Never yeah, ceases to me. To when the ball goes sailing over the bar at Bellsley and you hear the cry, Peter Head. <laughs> That's not going to change, is it? <laughs> No, I've watched them a couple of times this season at home and uh, they're, they're a good side. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. If they had a striker, they would have been way, way up further up the league. He's a good manager though, isn't he? Yeah, I had him through here um, doing the link-up presentation a few years back and yeah. he's such a nice gentleman. Mm -hmm. There we go then, what can Fraser do here? In the middle, looking for what's Ryan Sargent, you're going to set up Rankowie. 
Cowies cuts it across. Hacked away. Yeah, by Jack Grant. Time there, I think. He didn't know much about that. Hacked away for a corner. Yeah. Barber's insisting on taking them. Oh, we see Figs do goggle celebration today, I wonder. Here we go. Brian Hayes in there. Oh, Kieran Simpson forced a good diving save. Now that was a chance. From Stuart Knight in the Potter's goal. I'm not sure if I wouldn't think taking my corner, though. No, I don't think so. I think he gives you something in the box, yeah, doesn't he? Absolutely, so strong. Yeah. That's coming back to them as well. I don't know if the wind just seems a wee bit stronger than it looks, because it doesn't look that bad when you're watching. I know, I know. I think Mark Cowie's maybe contemplating a, a, a wee switch, maybe. Uh, I think you'll wait till at least an hour in, I think. You think so? Yeah. That's the hour in now, nearly. Yeah. At least he's touched the ball in the last 15 minutes. I don't think he has. Now, Forrest have been penned into their yeah. own half. I don't think, well, I don't think Brindle's touched the ball this half at all no, in 15 minutes. It. That's still not even reached the halfway line. Just went flat again the last few minutes. It's got a wee bit scrappy, yeah. They kept it in though. Well done, Wayne Sargent. Paul Young picks out Sargent again. No foul there. It's Grant Campbell. Trying to make progress down the wing to Sargent. Sargent crosses the ball and it's straight into the hands, the waiting hands of Knight in the Can Can's goal. Grant Campbell did well there. He did. Yeah, he got the ball down the line. He did. He set it up nicely. He definitely set it up nicely there. Yeah. You can clearly see the phrase of a shape that they play the 4 2 3 1. Yeah. It's very effective indeed. Barber's been quiet by his own standards, though, hasn't he? Yeah, he hasn't been too much involved. There you go, James, you're going to bag of crisps. <laughs> I made a real crunching noise down the microphone. <laughs> Got in my face there. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, it's Brian here with the ball in the box. Oh, it's a own goal! Oh! What a marvellous save! That looked an own goal all the way. The ball, the ball ricocheting off the Forest defender. And what a wonderful save by Stuart Knight. Yeah, he is Forrest. definitely one of the top goalkeepers in league football. Aye. Yeah, Forest looking a bit dangerous now. They are. Great save though, fabulous save. Yeah. Another corner. Yeah, Frisbee's definitely been on top of the second half and they need a goal to show for their dominance. And Barber again with a corner kick. Brian Hayes in there. Breaks to Kieran Simpson. What a save again. Kieran Simpson thought he scored there and a wonderful flying save by Stuart Knight. Yeah, I think everybody else thought he scored as well. <laughs> Top class goalkeeping, James. Ah, oh, great save. Great save. He's a big lad, but he can fling himself about. Aye. Praise were looking to add to their tally. Ball comes in. Grant Campbell. Not his best effort. No, I didn't get over the ball at all. Didn't much keep it down. But, uh, the pressure's building, starting to build up, so. Two tremendous saves there. Ah, that's kept Forrest in this game, to be fair. Billy Gordon might have held him, though. <laughs> might have done. <laughs> <laughs> Any six yard box, you see. <laughs> Billy's here today as well, he's in the lounge. All time record holder for Fraserburgh. 700 odd games, isn't it? 740 odd games, isn't yeah. it, Billy? I met him and Jimmy Young, and uh, as I said to them the other day, how many games have you played? He said, We'll play more than this. 1300 between us, yes. 700 and 600 or something. Uh, Jimmy would be second, I think. Yeah. Most cup, uh, most uh, played games. For sure, for sure. And his son Paul, of course, playing today. And he's captain as well, so. Yep. It'll be a proud day for Jimmy. Very much so. Very much so. He's one of the true gentlemen of the Highland League as well. Quiet man, Jimmy Young. 
of the water board to me, doesn't he? He Put does that. Lightly. Yeah. That's what I say. I can't believe that uh, Billy Gordon's 60 this ne next year. Is he? Ah, it's hard to believe. He's wearing well, though, Billy. Yeah. I did his testimonial dinner with uh, Sir Jackie Charlton. Yeah. Remember that night? Yeah. I picked up Jack Charlton at his hotel in Aberlour and I took him to Peterhead. We stayed the night and I next drove him back to the hotel the next morning. I was going to wait for work. He says, I'm buying you breakfast. You've driven me all over the north. So he bought me breakfast. It was wonderful. Kieran Simpson once more. Make contact. A shot. A break! Paul Young! Paul Young! That is a goal! That's a goal! That could have captured the Highland League for the fourth time in Fraserburgh's history. Paul Young drills it in from 12 yards through a forest of legs. A wonderful strike. He kept it down so well. Yeah, the goal's been coming. Fraser have been far the better side in the second half. And uh, give good credit to Kieran Simpson there as well. And a good knockback yep. to allow yeah, yep. uh, Paul Young to hit, uh, hammer that home. 65 minutes, what a tremendous strike, he kept his composure and he drilled it. Nothing the goalkeeper, Stuart Knight, could do about that one. No, he's had some great saves, there's no chance with that, he's not no. keeping that out. No. But Here's hopefully now Fraser can go on and get a couple more. Yep. Fraser, Fraser can now relax a bit and start to enjoy their football. Give it another 15, 20 minutes, the party will start to commence, I'm sure. Fraserburgh 2, Forest Mechanics 0, one hand on that famous old trophy. <coughs> uh, it'd be great to see Willow West coming on as well for the final half an hour or so. Very much so. I think Willie may well come on, Harris may come on possibly, give him a, a last few minutes in front of the fans. Okay, ball in by Barbar. Bar. Whoa! Ryan Sargent puts the ball straight back across goal and past the post at the other side. I thought that was going to bulge in there also. Oh, fantastic delivery by Barbar. Just needed a wee bit more composure in front of goal there, but oh, that would have been nice in the cake, I think. Well, as Forrest is going to make the substitutions, we're looking for a Brock substitute, but it looks like Forrest are set to ring the changes. Yeah, they just, the Forest haven't got going go in the second half, I think. They've hardly got out their own half. Yeah, I think they've only been once up their own half, so. Well, there's two subs coming on for Forest anyway. I think it's number 22, Owen Loveland, I think. Number 22, and who's the other one? Paul's coming back to him there. One by Sargent. Now it's cleared. Can't quite make out the forest, other forest subs number, but we will very shortly, I'm sure. <laughs> now they're making their substitutions now. They've only got three subs down with them. They've only got three subs, yep. Yeah, yeah. Only got three subs. We're carrying on, though. They're making them now. Here we go. If he turns his back, we'll see his number, James. Going off is uh, number 17, that's Alan McPhee. And Paul Brindle going off number 7, and it's number 19 coming in. Uh, no, it's not. Number 22 coming on is Owen Loveland. And who's the other one? Let's see. It's number 11. It's uh, Sean Morrison coming on also. So, Forrest ring the changes. We were expecting the Brock maybe to do the same. Yeah, I think we think Forrest need to do something for you back into this match. Very much so. Yeah, I feel so for Paul Brindle because he had a good first half, but they just haven't been able to get out half to get him involved in the second half. He's not touched the ball at all in the second half, has he? No, not at all. That's as much the conditions and, and, and Brock pressurising them. Yeah, so. It, I mean, the first half was difficult for the Fraserburgh, but they, they made a game of it, but the Forrest just haven't got going. That's true. That's true.
Shout from Leesk. And he does well. Oh, he dropped it. Ball that just didn't carry. There was a shout, but I think Brian Hayden maybe didn't hear him. But the Brock break. It's Paul Campbell. Scott Barbo is offside. That's a free kick. Yeah, the ball just held brought up there. Down. There made it difficult for Leesk. Yeah, yeah. Brought down by Jack Grant, a booking. A yellow card for Jack Grant of Forrest for bringing down yeah. Paul Campbell there. If you're a Forest fan, that was a good booking. It's yes, he was going dangerous. away, wasn't yeah, he? Yeah, he was, he was, away he was going him. away, so. Is that take call? Taking one for the team, James, and uh, what they call the modern idiom. Absolutely. It's part of the game, to be fair. <laughs> yeah, I see Wally West warming up there. Yeah, you yeah. called it correctly. I think Wally will be on very shortly. Yeah. I think it's probably Ryan Sargent will make way, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is, will it? You know, Ryan, Ryan, Ryan's been struggling a wee bit with injury the past few weeks, so they might. Okay, he's gone in the knock. They might uh, give him a break, I don't know. Okay. Grant Campbell, gonna hit it. Gets it in the box. Lee Fraser tries to clear. Bigley lining it up. No, he puts it wide for Sergeant. Sergeant with the ball. Back to Ryan Kelly. Nice ball by. Grant Campbell was cut out. Campbell to Simpson. His ball cut out also. Grant Campbell checking back. Good play by Forrest. Kenny McInnes. Well, re well read by Brian. Yeah. Cut out very well. Ever dependable Brian here at the back. Come on, Willie! Come on, Willie! Uh, big fan favourite, Willie West. Isn't he just? Uh, and, uh, brought up just two doors for myself. Club captain, here he right. goes. Mm -hmm. And it's Ryan Cowie, is it? Uh, Ryan Cowie coming off. Ryan Cowie going off to be replaced by club captain Willie West, as you say. A huge fans' favourite. Huge applause for Willie West coming on. I think Willie's played everywhere bar and goal for the Brock during his time. Uh, he has. I'm not quite sure what's his best position. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a chance here. Oh. That was a chance. Uh, that was Paul a Young chance. would be second, but it was uh, straight at Stuart Knight and the big keeper got down well to smother his effort. Uh, well, it was, he was uh, stayed just two doors from where I was brought up in Belga. Is that right? Uh, good player indeed. Cultured player. Very good in the air as well, isn't he? a lot of good goals all this time as well. With his head especially uh, as well. <coughs> now, I imagine that the trophy has come out to the back of Rod Houston's boot and it'll be on the ground by now, I would think. I would like to think so. I did wonder where it would be this, if it would be <laughs> up at Devon Vale or somewhere like that, and <coughs> depending on the score at half time. Oh, I think they had a cunning plan, but it's here, and it's going to stay here, but the looks of it. They had uh, contingency arrangements in place, but I think it's going to be staying here. <coughs> I think it could be buzzing at five o'clock here, James. Uh, I think it is, it's going to be rocking. It's still been a wee bit quiet, but I think that will change. Yeah, yeah. As the game wears on. Here we go, another substitution. And going off is uh, Forest number eight, Jack Grant. And there is only one more substitute. It must be number three, Cameron Hoth, coming on. And it is, that's it, Cameron Hoth coming on. I think all Brock subs would like on just now, wouldn't they? Oh, yes. I think I see Gary Harris, I think, taking his jacket off. I think I'm right. Is it Jack Gary Harris looks, taking? Looks like it. Yeah, you're just waiting for a shout there, are you? Yeah. That'd be nice to see him bring his career in high league football to an end with a with a victory and a, and a medal. No, he's had a good career as well. Played for Turf and Devon Vale. He did. Started at Isla Vale. Isla Vale, was yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Started at Isla Vale, Turf. Uh, Vale, been around us, Gary. Good uh, player. Yeah, scored a lot of goals in his time at the, the Brock as well. Yeah, yeah. He has that. Mm. 
he seems to have changed his mind. <laughs> he's checking his boots. Uh, it must be tough, tough for Mark because he's trying to balance the. We've got to make sure we see this out and get the result to, to getting guys on. So correct. Ball in the box, a dangerous ball. Knight just gets down to touch it away, parry it away for a corner kick. No, I know Gary Harris' his dad, uh, Stuart Harris, really was a really nice guy. A builder in Aberharder, Foggy. Used to be a jockey, you know. He used to ride a horse called Foggy Loon. <laughs> he, must be, he must be smaller than... Uh, Aye, well, yeah, he's, a, he's, he's strong, but he's, he's small, but he's strong. The ball there, and again, gathered by Stuart Knight. No, he was telling me he used to go the, to, to places like uh, Inch for the races, and they would go down to the borders as well. And he was a jockey. And you know who else was a jockey? Big Eddie Morrison from Huntley, but uh, Morrison Motors. He was a jockey as well. But <laughs> I said to I said to Stuart, did Eddie have a deal? He said, no, he was a slim lad. And he was, uh, I got away with that, I think, maybe. Or Eddie will maybe not speak to me next time I see him. So yeah, I think it's Gary Harris coming on for an appearance to mark his retirement from Highland League football. I think Gary will probably make way, I think, for... Uh, Paul Campbell, maybe? Paul Campbell. No, it's not Jimmy Bigree. Jimmy Is it? No, it's Paul Campbell. Paul Campbell, I would think. 15 minutes to go. Paul Campbell going off. Scorer of Fraser Bridge. Opening goal from the penalty spot. The 41st minute. Be replaced by Gary Harris, who's bringing the curtain down on his long and successful Highland League career. drama where he's been on <laughs> I don't know he's been drinking the pill on an extreme no late of us but he's enjoying himself <coughs> the composure from Willie West there looking for Ryan Sargent Willie West to the throw in the Brock's definitely stepped it up in the second half yeah very much so deserve to be total ascendancy in the second half his supporters have never been over the halfway line hardly have they Kieran Simpson will put it back. Paul Leach must be frozen. Must be frozen. The second half, he's hardly touched the ball. <coughs> Man here looking for Jamie Bigree. Clever play, Paul Young. Oh, Brian, we got away with that one. A nice ball through to Harris, but it's going to run away for a goal kick. Yeah, it must almost be finished up at Bucky, is it? I'm looking for the score as we speak, James. You caught me mid a. Uh, Mid Twitter, it should, it should be a real goal for Port Williams. Oh, that was the original goal mm -hmm. for Port Williams. It's still one more for Port Williams at the time. Looking for scores to come through. Hopefully, got an update when he's got it. Here we go, there's an update. That's a clever ball from Louis Davidson down the line. Gant Campbell! Yeah! Gant Campbell! Gant Campbell makes it 3-0 with an angled drive. Oh, and a wee somersault there from Campbell as well. A big man from Wick with 12 minutes to go. And it's Fraserburgh 3. Forest Mechanics 0. And the league is now well and truly coming to Bellsley Park. And deservedly so, James. Yeah, absolutely. It was a great ball down the line for Lewis Davidson. And a uh, good ball inside for uh, Grant Campbell to finish it off. And got the most uh, Leeskies done all afternoon was a celebration. Yeah, yeah. That was a brilliant <laughs> sentence. Leeskie, Leeskie ran the whole length of pitch to keep warm. <laughs> <coughs> I think we can safely say now that the Highland League title is coming back to Bells Lee after a, a gap of some 20 years. And it's nice to see. No chance again, but 
Nate does well to go out above his head. Scott Barber, yeah, Scott Barber's match. got the money. It so, slightly surprises me. Yeah, I'm saying, I'd have given it to Kieran Simpson. Yeah, Kieran Simpson, or, or maybe well uh, Grant park. Campbell, possibly. Yeah. Isn't there a of substitution coming up? Is that Butcher? Yeah, Butcher coming on. Sean Butcher and goal scorer Grant Campbell going off. Sean Butcher. Yeah, Sean Butcher's had an excellent season. Yep, coming on with 10 minutes to go, 11 minutes to go. Scored a lot of important goals in the early part of the season. Surprisingly good with his head. For he's not the biggest, isn't he? But he's good with his head. Very, very good in the air. Well, we have equalised against Fort William, so that spared the Devon Vale blushes. Butcher early in on the action there. Harris looking for Barber. Sides to put it back to Lewis Davidson instead, and Brian Hay going to put it across to Kieran Simpson. So uh, I wouldn't say the, the Brock are an easy street now, but they're very comfortable now, James. Yeah, they're comfortable. Yeah, there's no need to go and chase more goals, just keep possession, see the game out, and uh, enjoy the rest of the day. Clack have pulled one back against Bucky. It's uh, Clack one, Bucky, this will three. But uh, I don't think it matters anymore, James. The title's uh, coming to Belsley. Yeah, no, there can't be long. There's a 10 to go. And it's a booking there. Devon Vale just taking the lead against Fort William. <coughs> Sparing the bumpers' bushes. Now then, going to finish in even more style by adding a fourth one. So who's Ryan Sargent looking for here? Kieran Simpson? Or Brian Hay? Barber at the front post, I think. I think he's going to knock it in, into, the, into the space there. Could be. Someone coming across. Butcher went front post and scored at Rothes with a header. That's a deep one, but I think that's uh, nearly out of the ground, that one. That was almost a Peter Head. Peter Head. Adrenaline, we'll call it, uh, James. <laughs> a wee bit. Just a wee bit too much on it. It's great, great to see Ryan getting the whole game as well. He's done well. He's been out on loan a few times, but he's come back. Well, I'm sure you can hear the, uh, the song going around Belsley at the moment. Well, this group of boys deserve this. Very much so. Absolutely. And to, to end in top of Bucky for their great run is, is again it's a great achievement. Chance here. No. Oh, no he's just couldn't get couldn't get control. I think there's even more people come in the second half than there was in the first it half. It looks like it. I, there's got to be 14, 1,500 people in the ground oh, here absolutely. today. With the party about to commence. Bigri's worked hard today also. Yeah, he's done well. Full time clock one, Bucky three. So Bucky have done all they had to do. It was always going to be an uphill task for them after uh, Saturday's uh, Wednesday night's draw against uh, Wick Academy, of course. Yeah, I was surprised they drew that game to me. Yeah. I think they won at home as well against Wick, who's come down a fair bit. That's true. But, uh, I don't know if they were unlucky or not in the cup final on the Saturday. I think Broder maybe were a wee bit streetwise for them, uh, James. I wasn't at the game. I think Broder were a wee bit streetwise. Oh, hello, we've got uh, like confetti, looks like confetti, <laughs> where did that come from? I, 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 I had a folk. bang. <laughs> so 
Are you coming back for a pie and a drink after this in the lounge? Yeah, I'm going to pint more a pie supper and put it half past six. I shall, I shall live. Uh, if, if you need to go back to uh, to the uh, hospitality suite at the same time. What a goal! What a goal! Ryan Sargent from 35 yards. A wonderful shot on the turn. Stuart Knight didn't have a ghoster with that one. It's Fraser for a four. Forest Mechanics nil. And a wonderful moment for young Ryan Sargent. Oh, contender for goal of the season. Absolute great fitting away to end the season as well. What a strike. Well, that's the icing on the cake, Sean Butcher. Folks, isn't it? It's Sean Butcher. Sean Butcher. Not Ryan Sargent. No, Sean Butcher. Oh, we're getting too excited there. It was Sean Butcher. What a wonderful strike. I say that's the icing on the cake, James. 4 0. And this, this is what threatened after Fraser was scored one. We thought they might get more. Yeah, particularly in the second half, the win behind as well. Forrest just really haven't got out their own half. They haven't, no. No. You know, they've been be chasing, as well. chasing shadows. It's less than five minutes to go. It's 4 0, it could be more. Let's see. Well, what an, what an inclusion is. Scott uh, Butcher just after maybe three minutes after coming to the pitch. Well, that's a hope. It's an announcement asking people to stay off the pitch at the end of the game. Well, good luck with that. Good luck with that. That's not going to happen, I don't think. Wouldn't have thought so. It'll be a friendly invasion, though. Frisbee's will deserve the win. Very much so. They've won the league and they've won it in style. And Rothes have just equalised it for Martin. Your beauty, James. It's a good day for all of us. We've got a happy day, Edwards. Yeah. Happy days for us all. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful stuff. Here we go. Let's see if the Brock can add to their 4 0 tally. It's a big ball in the box off the top of the crossbar. I don't think Stuart Knight knew much about that one. And it's all Fraser now. Kieran Simpson knocks it forward. A wee bit of a push there, I thought, but they got away with it. So who do you expect to lift the trophy? Will it be Willie West? Uh, or Willie West will, Willie will do it. Uh, I'll Club be surprised captain. if it's not Willie. Very Willie West feeds Scott Barber. Barber a little bit of fancy play there. Hits the I side netting. Barber disappointed, hasn't he found the goals today? There's a note, uh, text from the Rothes Germany and Paul, the Brock worthy champions. I'm delighted for ah, them. Isn't that nice? Ah, it's very nice. Well, Freddie and very Paul, very Chairman very of Rothes, and you're right. The Brock are worthy champions of the Heineken League yeah. season 2021-22. You have to feel sorry a wee bit for Bucky. For 23 wins in a low, and you're still going to win the league, but shows you how reliable and how consistent Fraser has been over the, the course of the season. Very much so. The great run Bucky had. 23 games without a defeat. Wonderful. Just shows how good the, pre the Heineken League is, though, isn't it? It really does show oh, how good the league is. It's a competitive league, league. And it's the friendliest league in the world. It's wonderful. You'll have made many, many friends oh, over the years, James. The football's just one aspect of it. You know, the hospitality and the fun after the, the 90 minutes is up is equally as important. Yeah, very much so. It's only the second time, at least he'll have touched the ball this half. I know. It's a great clearance as well. Sure is. Barber sets up Harris. Still there. Lee Fraser, favourite to win it in the air, but comes back out to Willie West. Yay! Oh, how fitting! How fitting was that? The club captain, Willie West, drills the ball past the diving Stuart Knight from 25 yards. And Willie West, a homegrown hero, puts a tin lid on the result. It's Fraser for a five. Forest Mechanics nil. And what a wonderful way to finish the game. Oh, fantastic strike, kept, it, kept his knee over the ball. It's going to be more chuff for Willie. Wonderful, wonderful indeed. I 
I hope he continues and plays on for another season, will he? He can do it. He's, oh, he's, he's certainly got it in him. He's definitely got it, hasn't he? Oh, absolutely. Almost be time up, is it, uh, Dave? Not long to go, James. Uh, it's uh, injury time now, I would say. Stoppage time. Uh, there hasn't been much of that, so you're not going to get much more than the 90. Could they make it six? Yeah. The Forrest haven't done much wrong today, to be fair. Magnificent performance in the second half by the Brock. They've showed their class. They really have. Everybody's played their part. No, they've turned up, turned it up, and uh, Forrest just couldn't live with them. Yeah, yeah. I'm so pleased to see Willie West finish it off in style there. Ah, absolutely. I work with Willie as well, and he's an absolute gentleman of a guy, topper. Quiet man. Ah, aye. quiet man. Bit like yourself, James. Aye. Quiet man in your younger aye. days. A few sair heads in the brock tomorrow, James. Oh, yeah, there it goes. <coughs> there goes the final whistle. The final score. Fraser Bra 5. Forest Mechanics now. And the Brock are worthy, worthy, worthy champions. There's no doubt about that. You must be very proud, James. Yeah, very proud. Great for the team, great for the managers, great for the town. You see everybody gets behind him, so. Richly deserved title for Fraser Bra. And you can see the excitement ringing all the way around Bellsley. You can hear it. And Forrest played their part. They, they can hold their heads high. They competed for a long, a long time. Yeah, the first half, there wasn't much in it. Second half was almost one-way traffic. But they've done well. They didn't do a lot wrong, Forrest. Just couldn't live with, with the Brock when they put the ball down and played it around. Yep. I see the fans have done as they were requested to. They haven't come on the ground. I'm surprised at that. <laughs> I'm amazed. <laughs> well, a marvellous moment. You, you've experienced this moment, James. It's, 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 a, it's one for the history books, isn't it? Oh, it is. It is. It never leaves you. We got it to do one in the league once, but it was still still a great achievement. Uh, well, they may never do it again. That's a thing, isn't it? Oh, that's it. We're at the moment, and I'm sure the boys will really enjoy themselves tonight. Very much so. The odd orange juice, maybe. Ah, uh, well, maybe a pineapple juice if they're lucky. <laughs> As the players gather in the the centre circle, the Forest Mechanics goalkeeper Stuart Knights congratulated each and every one of them, and he had a magnificent performance as well. I'd he kept the score down. He did. A few more he certainly him. did. Well played, Stuart Knight. Well played. Well, let the party commence. Oh, that's it. That'll be a bit shy. That's Finley Noble and Mark Cowie. Mark Cowie's in tears, I think, is he? I think there's maybe a, a bit of tear there in Mark Cowie's eyes. bunch of guys and it's well deserved. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> I hope Paul Leach doesn't have dropped the burden. <laughs> I see Alexander's doing there as well, you'll know him. Is Xander there? Xander's there. He's some boy. Oh, he's a rare lad. Would yeah. you let him have a Coca-Cola tonight or is that too dangerous? Oh, maybe a diet one but he'll be okay. <laughs> So I wonder what do they go into the no I think they'll stay out in the pitch, won't they? Oh, I hope they'll so. They'll stay out yeah, in the pitch yeah. and the trophy will come out to see them, I think. Uh, one one moment for Finley Noble, though, isn't it? Oh, Started yeah. it cleaning the boots at the age of twelve. Uh, and he, he's gone all the way through the club, all the positions, secretary, chairman, SFA official, wonderful man. Uh, dedication second to none. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's if people don't realise the amount of Mark work he Cowie, goes in behind. The emotions the showing in Mark Cowie at the moment. He just gives Xander a big cut on the emotions are showing. Oh, and there's a champagne going. 
No surprise, it's uh, Pig Barb of the Champagne. <laughs> a wonderful historic moment for uh, Fraser Brough Football Club. There's Brian Hay joining the party, celebrating his testimonial season. All we need now is that famous trophy to come out. Well, there's a few, a few getting drenched in champagne. What a waste of good champagne, James, <laughs> isn't it? Waste of good champagne. Here we go, another bottle being cracked open by Willie West. Oh, here it goes. Ready for it. Here's the lid. Whoa! <laughs> Deary me. There's going to be some night in the brock tonight. This barber's wee boy, he know what it's all about. <laughs> He's drunk it. <laughs> I would imagine so. I would imagine so. <coughs> well, that's right. That's right. That's right. It is, and it's going to be a, it's going to be a tough two games actually. You know, they'll need to. Oh, there's the trophy about to come out. Look in the middle. Of the, they got the medals in the middle of the, the centre circle, I think. <coughs> Well, the first one will be, it's the first one here, is it? First one here, James? I can't remember. Uh, it'd be nice if it was. It'll be a tough one, it'll not be easy, but hey ho! Of course they are. Prism was capable of beating anybody in the day, there's a trophy. We can now see the trophy. Yep, yeah, yeah, for sure. Very much so. Very much so. There's n there might well do. <laughs> I'll tell you, there's nobody left the ground, James. Not a soul left the ground. I know, I know. Well, they get a good view because they're presenting a trophy over there with a huge lot of fans over there. And they're also here also and uh, in front of the stands. So the players will move across very shortly to receive their medals. That's a new Highland League secretary in the middle, John Campbell, with the glasses. Of course, it's a squad game now, James, isn't it? <laughs> More confetti. <coughs> Uh, the whole family is involved, all the kids are involved. It's wonderful to see. A wonderful, a wonderful atmosphere at Bellsley this afternoon. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Well, there's Rod Houston trying to round them up and get them into the centre circle. Among them, just a beagney with a. Is that a wee boy in a blue bonnet? I think it might be. Beagney's doing his own lap of honour. Kieran Simpson with a wee girl. There. He's gonna be all enough for that. M must be. <laughs> must be a nephew. <laughs> it's a niece, it's a wee girl. Uh, niece. <laughs> uh, there's a few bairns coming on now, but that's allowed. Bairns are allowed. Of course, the trophy will be presented by. Breeden Chief Executive for Scotland, Alan McKenzie, a great, a great uh, servant and loyal servant to Highland League football. Breeden have been sponsors of the, the league for quite a few seasons now and he's a, a top man is Alan McKenzie, a really nice man. Uh, you can see we had in this before. <laughs> <laughs> We're just not as efficient as the Champions League. This is true. <laughs> this is true. But a degree or two colder as well. Uh, but you wouldn't change it. Players have all disappeared from my sight. <coughs> yeah, maybe we're getting t-shirts saying champions on uh, them or something. I don't know. We'll but I would see. love to be in the changing room just now because that will be a great experience. 
I can imagine. Willie West no made his way in yet. He's the only one no made his way in. <coughs> the final score again for those just joining us. I'm sure you've been here all afternoon. Fraser for a five. Forest Mechanics nil. And that's the way to claim the championship in style. So, Highland League President George Manson. Uh, Tariff United former president. And Alan McKenzie. George Manson in the front. Oh, he's getting a he's getting a, 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 an escort from the kids. Isn't that wonderful? Alan McKenzie following George Manson out to present the trophy, and it's a a walk of fame for them. And the Bairns are gonna have a wee tunnel for the Brock players as they come out also, James. Uh, this is all the most of these will play for link up. I do they? Uh, That's a great be their, uh, score sponsor, the, the kids so they come to matches every game. Wonderful. Every game, so it's good. Isn't it great? And what a thrill for the kids. Oh, they'll enjoy it. They'll remember this. <coughs> yeah. Just hope it's not another 20 years before it's the next one. Well, you know, my first memory at the age of six was watching from the steps of the station hotel, looking across the drill hall at Rothes, watching the Rothes captain, Tommy Martin, and the Roth, the great, late great, King Willie Grant, who played for Elgin City and scored hundreds of goals for Elgin, lifted, because he was at Rothes 58-59, lifted trophy above, and I was at age six, and it's my first ever memory. So you see, this will live with these kids forever. I'll remember this. We are the champions ringing its way around Bellsley Park. All we need now is the yeah, Brock heroes. The kids have been told to create a path for the Brock players to come out and receive their medals and the trophy. And I'm sure the party will go into the wee small hours in the Brock tonight. Here's the coaching staff. Mark Cowie, James Duthie. Alec Mayer. Alec Mayer they played their part also, James. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And the physio. Yeah. Baxter's wife, her girlfriend. Is that right? Uh, Brilliant. Uh, and Xander. Uh, well done, Xander. Wouldn't it be the same? He's never gotten any older, though, does he? Xander, no. No. I remember Benny. Uh, <laughs> Benny died. Here's the Brock players all coming out one after the other. The squad game now, of course, all the squad will get their medals. Some good young players here as well. Didn't they get on the day? Isn't that just? Augers well. Lewis Davidson, Lewis Duncan didn't get on, but they're quality players. He's going away abroad, Lewis, isn't he, for a wee while? He's got America, I think, September. Yep. Go for a year. Yep. They've got a good, good coaching setup. Graham Johnston does the under 18s along with uh, Dean. Zig uh, Graham, yeah. Uh, I met Graham lots, earlier on. Lots of experience helping out the young kids. It's good, isn't it? Yes, well, Willie, look. Last to go. Willie's last to come out. It's a historic afternoon here at Bellsley. Willie, Willie, Willie West getting the all the applause from the kids who are all venturing the way now to see this trophy being lifted. A wonderful, wonderful, a colourful occasion here at Bellsley. Uh, it's not just black and white. Moment. And Willie deserves every moment of this. Doesn't need just. And what a goal to finish it. Oh, great goal. He's played, what, 17, 18 seasons in Highland League? Somewhere. Very much so. Somebody's handing Willie a bottle of champagne. Willie with his... Is that a wee boy, wee girl, and his hand, holding hands? He's got two kids, Willie. He's got two kids there. All we need now is Willie. He's the last one to come. He's trying to make his way through the barriers. He's getting there now. There you go, Willie West is the last one. I think he'll be lifting the trophy any second now. And Bellsley will erupt. Yeah, it's going to go no well doubt about for a few it. minutes, that's for sure. It's just a wonderful, wonderful occasion. Some people play high league football for 25 years, never come close to winning the league, James. So it's a privileged moment for these uh, players. There's, there's many great players that's, that's played as they won the Hill League trophy. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Even just for the Brock. For sure. So uh, for these, these group of guys, it's a great achievement. Yeah, yeah. So they're all gathering round the centre circle. So many folk me on the pitch. <laughs> I know. 
but it'll be better for the better for the players when they do a lot of honour. Of course it is. Of course it is. The trophy is about to be presented by Alan McKenzie, Chief Executive of Breeden Scotland, to Fraserburgh Captain Wally West, and shortly we'll see it lifted aloft. Here we go. Three, two, one. Wally West lift the Highland League Championship trophy. And the 2021-2022 Highland League champions are confirmed as Fraserburgh Football Club, and rightly so. Yeah, we'll never we'll forget that moment. Oh, a truly wonderful moment. You did it, Alan Park, all those years yeah. ago. Yeah, I still haven't forgotten that. Wonderful, wonderful scenes here at Bellsley. I'm sure the pictures are still being beamed across the world. I hope you're all enjoying the game this afternoon. And all, all will raise a glass to the Brock wherever you are in the world tonight. I'm sure you will. There's a player's going to wait to do. Are they going to do a lap of honour to see the fans? I think they may uh, well do. They, should. they almost broke ranks there. They're all getting their hands on that trophy. The tune Celebrate is being played, and they are. They're going round the ground with the trophy to see the fans. Some of the fans are moving away, but if they hold their, hold their places, the players are coming to see them and congratulate them because the, the fans have played their part also. Ah, they have. They've been fantastic this afternoon. Uh, fortunately, they didn't have to get too much behind them because Brock never really looked in danger of conceding, particularly in the second half. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And in the end, at the end, after 90 minutes, it was a little bit of stroll, but nonetheless, a fabulous atmosphere, a fabulous occasion, and Fraserburgh worthy champions, James. Yeah, and it's, it's unlike the Brock to make it a bit of a stroll. Yeah. <laughs> it's normally, normally hearts in your hand, but <laughs> uh, no, it's great to see. And wish them all the best in the playoffs as well. Uh, it's going to be hard, but the Brock can do it on the day. They sure can. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I think it'll be it'll be intriguing over the next couple of weekends to see how they go on against uh, Longlithgow Rose. Yeah. And hopefully get through that, then they can play most likely Cowdenbeath, and uh, again hopefully can get a similar crowds back here at the Bells Lee because they'll need it in the next two games. Of course they will. And I've I've enjoyed your company immensely, James, this All afternoon. Right. So for the likes of Mikey Stephen in Australia and, and Bruce B in Basra in Iraq and anyone else watching the live stream from the Brock this afternoon. Can we wish you all a safe evening, a very pleasant evening, and wish you all a very, very happy Easter from James Geddes and myself, Dave Edwards. A very good afternoon from Bellsley Park. Good night. <laughs>